I'm Mrs H or Samantha and I am in my house because I am staying home. Hashtag staying home. So hopefully a few of you will be able to find us in the next few minutes. Um, I'm just set up in my studio here, ready to do some cutting out and some preparations. Hello. Um, I've got my little um, setup going on there. So um, I have to change camera stands. I, I reckon maybe by day three, Mr. H will have got fed up of me moaning about changing camera stands and I found some fancy configuration or setup where I don't have to, so that's good. So, hello. Hi, everybody. If you are um, watching, let us know who you are, where you're from, if you're staying home. If you are not staying home because you are a key worker or you're an essential worker, thank you. Massive, massive thanks to you. If you are a teacher in your day-to-day -day life, even bigger thank you because I've discovered that I am not cut out to be a teacher. And um, so, yeah, but my daughter is still alive, so that's got to be a bonus, hasn't it? Hi, Eliane. Nice to see you. My daughter, actually, we call her Elvis online, but her real name is Cicely. She made something and she wanted me to show all of my friends. So I've just got it here, right here on my cutting table. She made it, uh, she did the part of it with me. See, in the mornings, I'm the teacher, so I miss mummy in the mornings. And then in the afternoons, I work and my husband is Mr. Daddy in the afternoons. So quite often I'll start things and then he'll finish them off because then we both get to work. So he works in the mornings and I work in the afternoons. So with me, she did the um, hands and with Mr. Daddy, she turned into a flower. So that's what she's done today. And she wanted me to show all of my friends. So here you go. So today we are going to make some flowers. No, we're not. <laughs> that might be good though, wouldn't it? If we all get a bit bored, we can make some flowers. Today we are going to make the, or we're going to start pre uh, preparing and cutting out for the bucket tote, which is my newest pattern. Hi Michelle, lovely to see you. Uh, now usually this is the point where I would hold up a bucket tote to show you and give you some sense of scale, a size, but um, it's in the storage. So yeah, kind of can't. Although if you fast forward to Friday, Mm, maybe Saturday. We might have one finished, ready to show you. So this is what we're making. This was a retreat exclusive pattern. It was designed for last autumn's retreat and it was um, gonna be for this May's retreat as well because we do um, two, each retreat exclusive pattern has two retreats and then it's released. But unfortunately we've had to cancel the May retreats and we are, we are massively gutted. So if you were due to come on the May retreats, please know we are so disappointed, but, um, so we've taken the opportunity just to release this and get it out there because, you know, I don't really like things hanging around half finished. So, uh, this one's been released. Hi, Patty. Nice to see you. We're international. So in the pattern, we've only got the PDF available at the moment because we're not posting. Lizzie, who does our posting has come down with a Rona. So she is resting in bed tonight. So if you ask a question and I don't see it and I forget to answer, I'll go back on after and um, add the replies. Usually Lizzie would be there in the background replying and adding links and things, but she's resting at the moment. She's she's poorly. She's not she's not super poorly. She's just poorly, um, but she's just taking some time to recover. So we've only got the PDF available at the moment. You can buy it on our website, www.mrs-h.com. Inside the pattern, you've got the, um, I've separated it off. So at the front, you've got the section with the photos, step photos. Oh, oh, I've got two copies. Oh, I thought that was a bit thick. I've got two copies, who knew? <laughs> so I've got the step-by-step -step photos. How embarrassing, terrible, shocking. Um, good, and slightly odd. Weird. Hi Sharon. And then you've got the uh, pattern pieces, which are all printed. We have included all of the rectangles and squares on this pattern as well. We've got the different bases for the stabiliser. Hi Sandy, nice to see you. And 
have already taped together my main panel pattern piece there. I'm quite lazy, so I haven't actually trimmed it that much. But, um, oh, Wendy, you're so welcome. Thanks for coming to my work to do this as well. Um, and then after the pattern pieces, you've got a sheet of labels, so you can keep track of what you've cut out. Once you've cut out, you can cut this out and attach it, pin it to your pattern pieces um, and keep track of which is which. There's a few rectangles, so that's handy. And then at the end, there is a text only version. So this is if you want to save ink or you don't, um, or you want to follow along on your iPad or your tablet or your phone um, for the pictures, but you just want to print out the bare um, instructions, that's that version there. So it's got all of the exact same text as the picture version, but it has got no pictures. So that is all included in the PDF for you. Uh, right, so let's get started talking about interfacings and stabilizers. This one uses um, a regular medium weight interfacing. Ta -da! This is F220, which is a medium weight non-woven now i've got the black here because i'm using a dark fabric if you're using a dark fabric or a bright fabric use a dark interfacing and it'll make the color stronger um, or darker white interfacing on a bright or a dark fabric can make it a bit washed out so i'm using black interfacing i like to use um non-woven i think we talked about that before firstly it's half the price and quite cheap and secondly, if you're going to add a foam stabiliser to a bag, then you remove the drape of the fabric anyway. So I think, why waste money? I don't sell my bags, so um, and it's only me who uses them, and they are samples. And personally, I like the finish that it gives. It gives a crisper finish. But I know a lot of people who sell, they like to um, use woven, fabric, uh, woven interfacing for their fabrics. It gives a nice softer feel um and they you know just personal preference i guess but i like to use the non-woven it also has oh sorry i should say that in my um demonstrations this week i'm not going to use interfacing on my lining hang on a second i'll get it Ta -da! that was like a magic trick wasn't it i'm using a coated cotton for my interfacing which is a little bit thicker so I'm not going to use interfacing on my lining because I don't think it needs it. If you are using something like a canvas or a linen or um, something that doesn't fray particularly badly and is a little bit thicker, you don't need to use the interfacing on the lining. It's your choice. Hi Laura, nice to see you. This bag also uses, got it here ready, a foam stabiliser. See if I can show you the... Um, the edge of that. This is a uh, Vileen Styleville, this particular one. It's very, very similar to uh, Flex Foam. That's it. Hello, on Flex Foam. <laughs> I knew it would come in the end. <laughs> and it's also very similar to Soft and Stable. It's a foam with a um, knitted finish either side. So it's sort of a, a trico finish, knitted finish either side. Bozal is a foam with a felted finish either side. Bozal does tend to work out slightly cheaper than the Styleville, the Flex Foam and the Soft and Stable. But if your machine is not particularly strong, you'll probably want to go for one of these that's got a knitted finish. Because once you get to the um, thick layers all together in bag making, it can be a little bit it's tough to go through. If you've got a particularly strong machine, I have got a really strong machine. I've got the Janome HD9. You'll have no problem going through anything um, soft and stable or Bozal or Starve or whatever you want once you've got the layers built up. So, hi Jane, nice to see you. Hi Paula, nice to see you as well. Um, so this is a foam stabiliser, so your choice, your preference, whichever one you want to use, I'm using soft and stable. No, I'm not. I'm using Starville by Violin. I already said that once. Brilliant, isn't it? This is great. Choosing to do this on a Monday when I've not been working in the morning and uh, I've been doing some painting. Actually, we found some rocks in the garden, so we painted those so we could do some little small rocks once we're all out of isolation and we can get some varnish and things 
So um, I've done some painting, I've done some cooking, done some Lego, did some colouring, haven't done any homeschooling. Because apparently I'm not cut out to be a teacher, who knew? Uh, so this pattern also uses a really firm stabiliser. So in the pattern it says, let me tell you what it says, it says Peltex or S520. So this is S520, it's a product by Violene. It's a, uh, I don't know if I can show you, non-woven kind of duty. And it's got, um, it's got fusible stuff on this side. And it comes in a roll. You don't want to sew through this. So if you're going to use it, keep it out of the seam allowances. This pattern has got separate pattern pieces for the stabiliser. So as you can see, the stabiliser is cut smaller than the fabric so that you don't risk sewing through it. You just want something really firm. If you haven't got Peltex or um, S520, oh, hi, Mum. Mum's here. The mother ship is here. It's her birthday last week, but we can't go and see her. Well, she lives like five hours away anyway, but if we could have gone to see you, Mum, we still wouldn't have because you live five hours away, sorry. But happy birthday for last week. Um, or if you haven't got Peltex and you haven't got S520, you could use something like Decaville. And this is the Decaville, uh, Decaville one, which is the thicker one, and that's fusible. You would just cut it exactly the same as the other ones out of your seam allowances. Okay, so that is the interfacings and stabilizers. So I'm going to now, if you've only just tuned in, you didn't hear the whole palaver about the fact that this is um, really last minute well not last minute but when we went into lockdown i wasn't intending to do videos so a lot of my equipment is in the storage unit and um i've only got the one camera and yeah so i'm just gonna move you from there to there and switch the camera around okay so just talk amongst yourselves for a minute now I'll try not to drop you Ooh. okay oh that's the ceiling hang on there we go there's the cutting table and I'm just going to pop you into the bracket. I will, I promise. There we go. Okay. Can we all see okay? Or oh, you can see my belly. Oh dear. Okay, you can see the cutting table though, yeah? Fantastic. Right, good. Okay, so I've got my pattern pieces here, I've got my pattern labels here, and what I usually do is, in a pencil, but I couldn't find a pencil, I usually go through and tick off what I've cut as I've cut it. I'll talk you through how I'm going to cut out, and then if you want to stay with me and cut your own pieces while I cut, you can. If you want to pop off, you can, and um, then tomorrow we're going to do something else. Strap, maybe? don't know, Lizzie did the schedule, but she's not here because she's poorly, obviously. If you are poorly as well, I hope you feel better soon. Horrible being ill. Right, so let's get started on the lining. No, rectangles. Let's get started on the rectangles. Because here's some I've prepared earlier. Ta-da! So I've decided this is not my lining fabric. As I showed you, I'm using the gold lining fabric, but I'm gonna have contrast pockets. Firstly for um, the zip pocket, so you can see what's going on. And also just as it's a nice little contrast and use it up. So I've cut my interfacing and then I've fused my interfacing onto my fabric that I want to use for my pockets. And then all I need to do is cut around cut around them so I can whiz through with a little rotary cutter I say a little rotary cutter it's standard size rotary cutter this is where uh, lack of time comes in because I can't find my short ruler I feel like I need some lift music while I'm doing this to keep you entertained. 
But if you're at home and you're in your love, uh, you're in your sewing space. Let me know if you're in your sewing space while we're doing this, whether it's at the dining table or uh, you've got a special room like me, um, or if you've turfed everybody else out to their bedrooms so you can watch me. Let me know where you are, and if you want to be sewing along with me over the rest of the week, that'd be great. Nice to feel like I've got some company. It's all very well being stuck in your house with your family. It's awful being stuck in your house with your family, isn't it? Oh my goodness. So there we go. So that's one of my slip pockets cut out. You can use this if you have got a nice print on your fabric that you want to fussy cut. You can fuse the interfacing on wherever you want to cut. Make sure that you get your motif in the middle or if you want to do pattern matching, that helps. Um, it also means that you don't have to print out your piece of paper and then um, pin it on and cut it out. I can hear little footsteps. So we'll see if I get a visitor. I don't think I will. <laughs> um, so that's what I'm going to do for all of my pocket pieces. I've got those fused on ready. So they can be cut out quite quickly. Whiz along with a rotary cutter. All about time saving and also interfacing is cheaper than fabric so I think if you want to um, make the most of your fabric cut it out of interfacing first then fuse it onto your fabric you could be a little bit more careful about how much fabric you're using um, as you're cutting for the base I have drawn it onto my faux leather I've got some nice purple faux leather oh my goodness let me show you my fabric okay let's pretend I did that at the start so I have got, I'm put my interfacing pieces to one side. I've got this um, purple Essex linen for the outer. Hopefully there'll be enough, but that's the benefit of using um, interfacing pieces. You can lay it out on your fabric and check you've definitely got enough before you get started. Lisa, you're in bed. Oh, wonderful. Janice, you're in the dining room. A sewing room is like a mom's house. Oh, I know. It's awful being at home, isn't it? Terrible. Hi, Lynn. Yes, uh, Patty, you can, um, you, can, um, you can come back to it. Unfortunately, if you stop, when you come back to it, it will go, it will um, pick up where you um, come back to if we're still live. If we're not live, it will start at the start again. So if you need to go and then come back, make a note of how far through you got. And then when you come back, you can start back at that point. Okay, but I haven't cut anything or prepped anything. So if you want to sew along with me, you can. You've got time. I'm really terrible at cutting out. I'm so slow usually. Which is why I thought doing it on camera would speed me up a bit. Anyway, so this is my purple Essex linen that I've got for the outside. And I've got this gold coated cotton. This is actually called putty colour. This is from So Hot. It's, it's waterproof, but it feels like fabric. It's absolutely gorgeous. Although it does smell a bit if you um steam iron it it does smell a bit like um you know the council swimming baths when they just uh like they've just cleaned them it smells a little bit like that um when you steam press it but as soon as you steam pressed it that smell goes away and it's really lovely to work with i absolutely love it and it's got that little bit of a sheen to it as well so that's my lining and you've seen my pocket fabric so that's my pocket fabric that'll go on my lining lovely and then I've got um, something that I picked up in February at the trade show we went to the um, retailers only trade show we had a stand there in February and the stand next to us was selling trims RTJ trims they were and um, I picked up this absolutely gorgeous trim and I thought this would be really 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 nice as um, a little bit of trim around the top so it I'm hoping it'll work, but I thought I could make my um, bucket tote completely and then sew the trim around the outside at the top afterwards. So I'm hoping that works out. I don't think I'll be able to mean machine sew it. It's, um, I don't know, it's sort of metallic threads at the top there, but I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I think that will look really lovely against my, against my fabric, quite nice. 
So um, I thought, when else to experiment live on camera? Why not? So that's my fabric that I'm using. Oh, look, there's an extra tassel. I'll just stick that on some craft in the next week. Does anybody else find themselves creating crafts for the kids to do out of thin air? Obviously, that's why we've uh, invented a flower made out of handprints. <laughs> Desperate times, you know. <laughs> but we are one week in. Woohoo! So I've drawn my oval for my base. I'm using this purple faux leather, which is a really good match for the Essex linen. And I'm just going to cut around that. Oh, I've lost my pattern pieces now. Oh, here they are, next to me. It's like being on retreat with me, this is. You soon discover that not everything is uh, as slick as it appears. <laughs> so it does. Here we go. Right, so with your pattern pieces for the base, just trim out these little triangles from the pattern piece but don't cut them out of your fabric. Okay. Do that and pop your um, pattern piece on your fabric for your base or your faux leather or whatever it is you're using then just draw these triangles on the base we haven't really got a big enough seam allowance to account for um cutting triangles out in bag making it's not like dressmaking where you've got five eighths of an inch and um, you've got room to sort of cut things out but then when you cut your base stabilizer you'll also cut the triangles out oh sorry you'll make marks for your triangles and then when you go to fuse it on you can line it up on your fabric line up the triangles and then you know it's perfectly in the center and you're definitely 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 not going to sew through it um one other thing before i start cutting out in case anybody wants to go your main panel stabiliser is this one and this just stops the bag um, pulling up as you carry it so on the um, on the finished version it just goes there like a little I don't know like a little crop top to keep everything in place so as you pull the handles up as you carry the bag this maintains its wonderful big open curve shape and it doesn't pull in on itself but you don't apply this directly to the fabric because otherwise you see a little line um, and if you look at some of the tester bags you'll see that there is a little line because we um, didn't really or I didn't really work that out until I saw the tester bags and thought oh no you can see the line of the stabilizer so instead what you do is you add your foam stabilizer to these outer pieces then attach your main panel stabilizer to the foam okay so the stability is there but it's not visible you can't see the little crop top on the um on the panel okay so i'm gonna get cutting if i can not lose my pattern pieces so if you want to stay and cut with me you're very welcome to if you don't want to stay and cut then tomorrow we'll be doing straps i say that with full confidence not actually having checked the schedule but i think it's straps and i will confirm later once i've double checked but i think it's strap so we're going to do the convertible strap it converts from a shoulder bag to a crossbody bag you just pull it up and carry it that way if you want to carry it like that so that's what we'll be doing tomorrow but for now i'm just going to be doing this cutting out if you want to stay with me and chat you can or you can um pop off now and then come back tomorrow Either way, thank you for tuning in. Oh, look, it's like an upside down wave. Goodbye to everybody who's going off to cut or if you want to cut with me, you are very welcome to. I'm just going to see how far I can go uh, in the time and without losing too many things. It's probably safest to assume I'm going to lose something at some point and then you won't be surprised when it happens, which is nice. 
also quite nice cutting out on camera because then I don't get disturbed by people trying to make me extra fat with all the baked goodies that they've made during isolation. Right. I hope somebody else is also suffering the curse of a generous family who are baking to keep the boredom at bay and then bringing cakes and biscuits and oh my goodness. Okay, so that's my base cut out. And I will refer to my little pieces. Here we go, base, okay. So this calls for one contrast, one lining and two medium weight interfacing. Now I'm not gonna use the interfacing on either of my base pieces because um, I'm using faux leather for this one and my lining doesn't need it because it's the coated cotton. So I'm going to cut that out. Now, if you weren't watching, I would be using my rotary cutter to cut these out just to, you know, in the interest of full honesty. Terribly lazy. Right, so base piece. And I'll need to cut a lining one. Oh, I can't pin it, can I? Because faux leather. Well done, me. I'll pin it in the seam allowance and pretend that I was going to do that all along. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that piece is done. Now, where am I going to put these so they don't get lost? Hang on, I'll pull the office chair over. Okay, onto the office chair you go. Right, what else shall we do next? Let's do the outer. And then I'll feel like I've got somewhere. So I've got my interfacing pieces for the outer. And what's that? Get the feeling this might be one of a pair, is it? Or, oh no, it's my strap tabs. So because I'm lining my interfacing onto my fabric first, I've cut my strap tabs twice as long. And then, and then I'll just fuse it on and then cut it in half. You know, fuse it on, cut it in half, and then it'll be like I've saved time. So I haven't saved time because I can't remember what it was to start with. So there we go. Right. Pull my iron and the ironing, board, ironing mat over. Okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one to cut my uh, labels with my rotary cutter. Terrible. We should be ashamed of ourselves. I've got my little mat. Now, usually I would pull my wool mat out and put it there, but I think it might be in the storage unit as well. Um, let's have a look. Yes, well done me, it's in the storage unit. Okay. It's very inconsiderate, this uh, lockdown. Okay. Well, it's not inconsiderate, is it? Because it's saving lives, but... If I'd just been a bit better organised, a bit better planned, I could have had these things. My first thought when they said lockdown, or when I thought lockdown was coming, was, I admit, not getting things out of the storage unit. It was um, making sure I had enough chocolate. So, um, yeah, and I also, I'm, I must admit, I did place a panic by order. And as well as ordering chocolate, I placed an order for the works and I bought some crafting kits for Elvis in case we got really desperate and then as soon as Boris said three weeks yes well done me I'm gonna need those crafting kits before the three weeks is up so there we go just wait for my iron to warm up it's one of these that falls asleep after a while, you've got to sort of use it to wake it up. I could do a little bit of tidying in the background so that I seem more organised. But I think it might be too late now. I think we all know the truth. Definitely by the end of this week. In the past, it's only people who've been on retreat that know the truth. But um, like a swan... Everything seems to be going swimmingly, gracefully swimming along the surface underneath, thinking, 
Now, where did I put my rotary cutter? Right, there we go. So, give that a little press just to make sure it's nice and flat and pre-shrunk. I don't pre-wash my fabric, but I do steam press it to make sure it's pre, um, pre-shrunk. Now, which way should this go? Probably that way. Obviously, if you've got directional fabric, you're going to need a little bit more so you've got space to cut out properly. And because I don't trust my iron, because it was a fancy one, it's always the cheaper ones that are more reliable isn't it but fancy ones are not just gonna use my press cloth this is just from um lakeland it's just a um you know bog standard laundry ironing pressing cloth but you can use a scrap of muslin or um silk organza anything like that okay just press it onto there Now, I do believe that Facebook has got a two hour limit for Facebook Live. So if we hit two hours, you all are going to be massively bored of me. Um, but just assume if it cuts out, then I've gone too long. OK. Look at all these scraps. I might be able to take up quilting at this rate. Whew. Our local bag group, they do quilting as well. Sometimes. And um, Moira, who runs it, she's a lovely lady. Her and her husband, Pete, compile all my patterns for me. And she said, while we're in isolation, make a scrappy quilt block at a certain size. And then when we all come back together again, we're going to make something. And I thought, yes, this is it. This is my chance to be a quilter and really show what I'm made of. And then I realised I didn't have any scraps. So um, I have to make or make some scraps. I don't know if you can use Essex linen and quilting. Not a quilter. So if you are a quilter and you know whether I can use Essex linen in quilts or not, let me know. Otherwise, poor Moira is going to be pulling her hair out at my ineptitude. So I'll just stick that one on and I'll do it in the same direction as the other piece. I just assume if I wasn't doing this live, it would all be nice and flat and lined up, etc. But um, needs must. Oh, hang on. How many people shouted at the screen then? Pressing cloth. Done that before, watching a um, shopping channel or something, and someone's demonstrating one of my patterns and they forget to do something or do something wrong or out of the pattern. <laughs> At the screen. <laughs> Terrible. Do it myself. And I go and Natasha makes if I do something wrong. And then watch it back. Which I don't like to because I always think you hate the way you sound, don't you, when you watch yourself back. But um, if I watch myself back, I'm like, no, stop! Don't do it. And I do it anyway because I can't hear myself, can I? Because I'm on telly. Right, I pop my pressing cloth back then. Pressing that. Pressure of cutting out live on telly. It's incredible. Right, here we go then. Oh, I've bent my mat. Let's assume that hasn't happened because I can't get another one because we're in isolation. I should get Cicely to sit on it tonight and make it flat again. There we go. It's like nothing ever happened. But now I need some scraps to dry off a bit. Okay, okay. Right, next time, Samantha, get the ironing board out. Oh my goodness, I can almost hear my mother telling me to do these things. Or Moira, actually, Moira tells me to do these things as well. She's very good. At uh, keeping me on the straight and narrow. Or Lynn, in fact, who comes to retreat with me. Been on retreat, you definitely would have heard Lynn say, come on, Samantha, do your strap first. Or similar. Which I think is probably why the strap is first in this pattern, because I knew Lynn was coming on retreat as a teacher. And I thought, oh, if I don't do it, Lynn will just remind me I should have done it first anyway. So, thanks, Lynn. We're all doing our straps tomorrow. 
Still, I say that with complete confidence without knowing whether we actually are doing our straps tomorrow or not. I'm sure we are. I'm fairly sure we are. Poor Lizzie, if she wasn't laid up, she'd be shouting at the screen now, wouldn't she? Saying, it is straps tomorrow. Right, uh, so this is my strap tabs which are meant to be two inches by two inches. And I've cut them four inches by two inches and just whiz along there. Cut that into two, ta-da! See, let's pretend that saves some time. Didn't save any time at all, but let's pretend it did. And now I need a label for those. Oh, look, I can tick both those off now because I've done two outer and lining, two interfacing, and I've fused them on. Well done, me. Pat on the back, fancy that. That's what they say in school, if you didn't know. If you didn't hang around with many five-year-olds, that's, uh, that's the in phrase at the moment, apparently. In the valleys, strap tabs, there we go. Pin a label to them. I've got these fancy pins, and they're magic grip, and they're... Um, meant to be really easy to pull out and you can iron over them and everything and you can iron them over them and they are really easy to pull out but I tell you what if you're sewing bags and you've got a bit too much strength you stick it in and it bends before you even have a chance to say no anyway okay strap tabs are done so let's do our main panel now I'm doing my outer first because this one I can I'm using interfacing for and I can follow the line of the interface when I'm cutting it out and then I can um, lay this on top of my lining and use that as a template rather than having to um, fiddle around and worry about folds and things. And it also means that my lining will be exactly the same size as my outer because if you've ever seen any of my videos before, you'll know I'm terribly inaccurate at cutting out. And so... This should hopefully minimise it. I say should, it, it rarely does, but the theory's there anyway, isn't it? Fortunately, on this one, you've only got to be accurate-ish. As accurate as you can be. I mean, it's got an oval base, but it's fairly easy to put in this one. It's a beginner level pattern. Quite like it. Just do all my straight lines and then I'll come back and do the um, curve. And in case anybody hasn't commented on this, I have found my small ruler. So apparently miracles will, will happen when you're stuck at home. Right. Okay, use my scissors to trim around. Oh, let me get bigger scissors, hang on. This is ridiculous. There we go. So let's just cut that bit off there. I have to trim that bottom up. Pretend I've trimmed that bottom up really well. Well done, Samantha. <laughs> if you're cutting out at home and you've done it really accurately, well done. I do hate cutting out, I find it so boring. I'd rather just get on and sew, no? Eh? Okay. There we go, so there's one of our main panels. Cut out. Ta-da! Oops, ta-da! There we go, is anybody still watching? Oh yeah, you're still with me. Okay, I'll keep going. I'll keep going as long as you're here. Right, cut that over there. And we go. There was plenty left. See, didn't have to worry at all. Don't know what I'm going to use for my strap yet. Should really, in theory, cut out your strap first because then you know you've definitely got enough fabric. And that's why, quite often in my later patterns, in my more modern patterns, the strap is always a first thing in the list so that you should, in theory, cut it out first. And I always leave it till last because I hate cutting straps. 
almost as much as I hate sewing straps. Funny that, I wonder if there's a connection. Oh look, this is much easier with a long ruler. You'll notice I always put the safety up on my rotary cutter. Because, say it with me, retreaters. Safety never takes a day off. Not even in isolation. Who knew? There we go. So just the curve to cut. And this is quite a deep curve. And if you don't like the deep curve... You can always straighten it off, but it's got such a nice curve to allow the bag to tuck neatly under your arm or um, so that the bag nestles in next to your hip while you're carrying it. Just um, gives you a nicer feel, nice snug carry fit. Okay, there we go. There's the second one. And I've got enough fabric left for quilt block if that's allowed for quilting although I still don't know if it is because I haven't been able to see who knows you can use Essex linen don't use cotton for linings and house well Meredith this is the thing I don't really keep scraps and until recently I was throwing it all away putting it in the recycle bin um, because my local children's hospice they can collect um, rags and scraps and they get seven pound per bin bag for it the uh, sorry the local children's hospice shop not the children's hospice themselves so until now anything smaller than a fat eighth well to be honest it's got to be about a fat quarter um has gone in the recycle bin which is terrible if it's a nice really nice fabric then i'll keep it and take it to retreat for the swap table which we have but other than that no I don't keep it and then um, Anne who is a lovely viewer from Sewing Quarter which I went on once and they never had me back um, because I was obviously a difficult presenter but um, she asked me to keep them for her because she makes quilts for babies in um, ICU so I've started keeping my scraps but I don't really want to dip into those for um, for the quilt block because therefore for little babies you can't get into scraps intended for little babies can you terrible wrong um but now i might have some scraps after this i suppose if i'm intentional about it but um i hang on to alison glass the sun prints regardless of size other than that no it's all gone because i don't quilt I see no point in hanging on to it, I suppose. Which I suppose is why so many people like to quilt, because you can use all of the little bits and pieces and make absolutely gorgeous blocks from them. I just um, realised that I don't like things hanging around, not being used, or um, with no plan or no intention, so um, I got rid of them, and it just freed me up so much and gave me... Um, Gave me release from that sense of obligation of, oh, I've got things hanging on, waiting to be done. We'll just assume my rotary cutter is not blunt because I've been using it for paper. We'll just assume it's uh, just because it's Monday. Okay, so who knows what that is? Let's have a look. That is 10 inches by 7 and a bit we'll pretend it's seven so let's see what that is see this is why you've got labels so you can cut them out and pin them on while you're cutting rather than having to measure ridiculous isn't it right so this is the zip pocket bottom no it's not it's the zip pocket top top if i was watching myself i'd be shouting at the screen again zip pocket top and I can tip that off because I've cut my lining and my interfacing tick. I should put it through my logo, shouldn't I? Ta-da! Oh my goodness, that's so good. Okay, 
that can go down there. My little pile of finished bits. This would be quite nice tomorrow because we can just get on and sew. Oh, no, it won't be nice because it'll be a strap. After that, it'll be nice because we can just get on and sew and it'll all be done. Ain't it? Right. Let's see which piece is this. Uh, this is 12 inches by 8 inches. That's got to be a slip pocket, surely. Let's have a look. It's a slip pocket. Woo! I think if I was on actual TV, there would be a nice canned audience response to that. Oh, hang on. I'm supposed to have two. Let's put that to one side. Got me another one somewhere. Oh, hang on. I've cut it out already. I've cut it already. Yes. There we go. Okay. There we go, two of those and a label. Almost feeling organized right now. Okay. This um this fabric, I don't know, don't really know what it is, but it's it's quite stiff. It's got quite a stiff feel to it. Almost feels like um, you know that really nice stiff batik fabric, but it's definitely not batik, it's just got the gold printing on it. It's just a little bit stiffer. I wonder if it would probably um, soften up quite a bit in the wash, but I had it on there. I went up to the grand opening of So Hot's actual physical store, which is up near Preston. Oh my goodness, if you can get there, you should go. It's got like a whole room full of bag hardware. It's, you go in and you think, mm, okay, this is, this is nice. And then you notice there's a door at the back of the room and you go through the door at the back of the room and you think, oh my goodness, there is loads of fabric in here. And then you notice there's another door at the back of that room. And you go through that door at the back of the room and you think, oh my goodness, there's a ton of hardware in here. And then you notice there's a door at the back of that room. You go through the door at the back of that room and you walk into this room that's got so much fabric in. It's got a sound deafening effect. It's like being in one of those um, chambers you know where they, a, a sound absorption chamber can't can't describe it. It's crazy. Um, and then you notice there's a um, a door at the back of that room, and you go through it, and there's a whole another room. And I think in total, there's something like seven or eight rooms. If you've ever been, absolutely incredible. But anyway, so they had a a bin with some bargains, you know, end of bolts and things, and. Found it in there. I've got two half metres, so I've probably got a metre. I probably had a plan, because I don't buy fabric unless I've got a plan, but I've forgotten what that plan is. So this is now the new plan. Oh, look, I'm putting labels there willy-nilly without ticking things off. My goodness. The pressure of being live on TV. Except I'm not live on TV. The pressure of being live on Facebook. There we go. Right, so I'm guessing this is it, pocket bottom. 10 inches by 6 inches. Double check. Yes, it is. Okay, good. So we've got the components for a zip pocket. Although we will need a zip. If we get to the zip pocket day and I've forgotten to find a zip, somebody can, can tell me off for that. Okay, and this is the little hook tab, which you don't have to put in. But because it's a bucket tote, it is quite deep and you are likely to lose things in it. So we've just added this little hook tab at the top to make sure that your keys stay where you can find them at the top. If you are going on a tube train in London, you probably won't want to use this. You probably want a bag with um, a zip top and a flap and everything else, something like the Holy Mayoli, um, where it's really difficult to open but for a you know i don't know shopping trip or going to the gym or oh this is funny isn't it because we can't go anywhere at the moment but if you want to go anywhere um or you want to take your uniform into work if you're a carer or a nurse or something um then that's handy you can pop your keys at the top in the hook tab i have to try and remember to find a swivel hook right now right so what have we still got left cut out so these are labels we've got left uh hook tab oh no that's the pattern pieces that's the 
pat and paste, pat and paste, pat and paste. Right, so the stabiliser will do that last, I think. The strap, we're not mentioning the strap. It says one piece of contrast, but my faux leather haven't got enough. I might have to do a completely different colour. We'll have to tune in tomorrow to find out which. It's exciting, isn't it? I suppose I could put gold faux leather with it. That would look nice, wouldn't it? But anyway, that's a that's a problem for tomorrow. Right, main panels. So we've got our outer main panels. So we just need our lining main panels now. And then we can add some stabiliser to them. Just clear this out of the way. trying to do this without knocking the phone off its bracket sorry if that was a bit close and a bit scary okay might probably be best just to give this a little press before I start cutting into it remember what I said about the smell of it luckily you can't smell because you're on my phone on Facebook but um, it's just a little bit of warning for you that that's what it smells like so that you know and you don't buy it and iron it and think you've got a faulty batch or something or it's gonna poison you or it's toxic or um, it's just you know that slightly sort of cleansing smell you know <laughs> they use their special cleaning chemicals and things to give the illusion of cleanliness in the swimming pool. <laughs> so, there we go. Okay, so it's my lining fabric and this is upside down. And now I need a piece of my outer fabric. This is the one that I've already cut, obviously, as you can see. And I'm gonna line it up on the bottom edge because I'm quite lazy and that's one less edge I've got to cut then. And if you can see that on the video, pull it up a bit to there, if you can see. Okay. And then I'm going to rotary cutter and ruler, and I'm just going to whiz around this. Now, if I was clever, I would have layered this up, but that would have meant ironing twice as much, which is a bit difficult on my tiny little ironing mats and I didn't get my big ironing board out because I thought I don't need that I can just use my tiny little ironing mat that'll be fine only doing a little bit of cutting out I think that's probably one of the biggest lies I tell myself I don't need that along with I wrote this pattern, I don't need to read it and see how I do over the next few days with that one. But if you see me not reading the pattern, can you shout or something and just say, don't forget you need to read the pattern. Well, look, if I cut across there, look, then that is not connected to that. Oh, it's connected. Okay. Let's try again. Then that is not connected to that. Oh, hang on, it's still connected. Okay, then that is not connected to that. And I can just pull it away and look, it all stays perfectly in place. Hang on. All stays perfectly in place. <laughs> that faulty tower's here, isn't it? The faulty towers of sewing. <laughs> oh no. Oh gee. Okay. I'll just line it up and pretend that was that was the end. There we go. There we go. Okay, and then I can cut around my little insert. Now remember, if you've done this, uh, if you've just used regular quilting cotton for the lining, you will have interfacing on your lining pieces. But I have chosen to use a slightly thicker coated cotton that doesn't need it. Okay, 
so if we pretend that I layered that up two layers then that would be my outer and my lining then oh my goodness it looks so good already that's gonna make a nice bag I think yeah good I like that oh with a pocket on let's have a look uh slip pocket there we go now if I had read the pattern I would know but I think I think it goes like that so look at that oh very nice very well done to me. Now, I've discovered that the key to choosing fabrics is to do it approximately 10 minutes before you're due to go on Facebook Live. And uh, you do it almost instantly without even thinking about it. And just get it done. Amazing. Who knew? So that's a top tip to you if you can't choose fabrics, set yourself a deadline. And, uh, and tell other people you're setting a deadline as well because that, that's just extra motivating. So I've got my styleville here and we'll I'll show you how I pop my main panels on to here. There's probably a more efficient way of laying them out, is there? No, both just as inefficient. Now if you do want to, or if you're um see I find that this um style bit, a lot of them are very similar. It's got a slight catch to it as you rub your hand over it. And if you've got your iron handy and you could just very quickly iron your fabric onto your stabilizer. There's no fusible on it at all, so it's, it shouldn't stick. But just that slight nap just does stick it almost to the stabilizer and stops it slipping around. And what I do, I believe the pattern calls for, let me, let me look, actually, before I, before I tell you something, not true. I believe the pattern calls for you to cut your stabiliser uh, Oh, foam will be cut later, there we go. Oh, look, there it is. Okay, so you cut your stabiliser just slightly bigger than your main pattern piece. And then you'll do what I'm showing you to do now. Does it tell you to... Oh, it just says half metre of foam stabiliser. That's fine. Okay. So I've got mine all in one piece. And that's what I usually do. And I just pin in one corner. And then smooth out into the opposite corner. And pin there. And then pin in the other bottom corner and smooth out to the opposite top corner so tomorrow um i'll have my camera set up by the um by the same machine but for now you're over my cutting table so i won't be able to show you basing this on so i'll just explain it how i do it um and if you have pre-ordered my book, thank you very much, it tells you how to do this in there as well. It's one of the techniques in the skill builder section or in the technique section. Okay, I'm just pinning each sort of angled edge just to keep it in place. Nicely smoothed out. Okay, I think that's probably enough. So what I would usually do is um, just cut this piece of foam down to a manageable size. Usually I double check there's nothing underneath the foam before I start hacking away at it, like fingers or paper. But um, I don't always do that because I just think life is a bit more fun with a little bit of added peril. But don't forget, safety never takes a day off. So added peril, good. No safety, bad. So what I'm going to do with this when I take it over to the sewing machine, I'm just going to start on a straight edge somewhere, maybe around about here-ish, and I'll sew around all of the edges using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. The seam allowance for sewing the bag is three eighths of an inch. So if I sew around using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, then I can trim the bulk off from the back once it's sewn. I'll show you how to do that tomorrow because um, I'm not set up for sewing at the moment. And then um, you've still got the stabilizer sewn into the side seams, but the main bulk of it is out of the seam allowance. Okay. So, um, you still with me? Still with me. Okay. 
So we've put that to one side. We've done all of our main panels. We've just got stabiliser left to do. So I will use, what shall I use? Um, I will use S520 because I've got it. I have a choice of Decaville because I've got Decaville over there as well, but um, use S520. And this is, it's really, I don't know if you can hear how plastic it is. Really, really firm and plasticky. Lynn sort of introduced me to this a couple of years ago. It's just a little bit thinner, but it's still just as firm. So I'm going to pin in to this to hold it in place. And this one, it doesn't matter if you pin because it's not going to be seen. You wouldn't want to pin your faux leather, except in the seam allowance, but this one, it doesn't matter so much. I'm just going to trim off around it so that it's a little bit more manageable. You could, of course, roll this backwards. I don't know how anybody stores it flat. I don't think I would be able to store it flat. But, um, it does have a um, habit of bending. There we go. Okay. Once this is fused onto your base, it will be fine. It will be lovely and flat anyway. Because um, once the glue melts and fuses, it, um, it just flattens out lovely. If you are using faux leather like I am, and your faux leather can't take any heat, then what you probably want to do is cut out a piece of lightweight or medium interfacing the same size as your base. So let's get the base piece. So this is the base. If you're using faux leather and it doesn't like any heat at all, cut your stabilizer out and place it on your faux leather. And then have a piece of medium weight interfacing or lightweight interfacing. Place it over the top and fuse it into place. Oh no, that's not going to work, is it? Because your failure doesn't like heat. Okay. <laughs> uh, sometimes I wonder about myself. Get yourself some medium weight leather um, interfacing and then just stitch it inside the seam allowance. And that is going to hold your um, Peltex or your S520 in place in between those two layers. Okay, if it can take some heat, then do fuse it on. If not, just hold it in place with an extra little layer of interfacing that you've sewn on, not fused on, because of course your faux leather can't take the heat. Oh my goodness. Wondering if I can't take the heat at this rate. So I'll just cut around my base stabilizer piece. I hope everybody's staying safe and uh, you've got all the groceries that you need, all the supplies you need. Anybody else having some slightly odd dinner combinations? Because apparently five-year-olds, when they go to school, use a different kind of appetite rating as to when they're at home. And the school stomach does not seem to have made it home. So we've eaten about a fortnight's worth of food in the space of seven days. I wonder if that's normal, if it's just Elvis, but um, either way, now we are having some slightly odd combinations of food, but you know, what's not to love about a roast dinner with alpha bites, eh? So there's my base stabilizer. So if your fabric can take the heat, then um, you can, uh, do you know what I'm saying this? I haven't checked the pattern, better check the pattern. Let's double check. Oh yes, ta-da! Okay, so fuse your stabilizer on. Obviously I would have done my triangles. I told you to do the triangles and I didn't do them. So we'll do the triangles really quickly. Show you those. It's funny how productive you can be when you're on a Facebook Live. Usually I would have stared out the window for about half an hour in between cutting out the main panels and the lining panels. See, we've got this mountain behind our house. Not just not just a weirdo. Well, I don't know. Might be a bit weird, but we've got this mountain behind our house. 
and it's great because you can see horse riders you can see dog walkers you can see people flouting the no um no social gatherings rules you can you know you can see all sorts out there and so usually as i'm standing at my cutting table i'm looking out of my uh mountain at the moment it's not my mountain i'm looking at the mountain at the moment and i just get distracted so easily so there we go so i've done my little triangles so you can line them up like that and make sure that that's properly centered fuse that into place if it can handle it if it can't add a bit of interfacing and stitch around the outside to keep it in place and then we're going to add the um, foam stabilizer to that afterwards okay um, so let's see outer main panels yep and then uh, yes so that's what we do so then once you've got that with the stabilizer on then you're gonna get your foam pretend that i fused that on i'm gonna get our foam and base the foam on in exactly the same way as we did the main panels at a quarter of an inch so in the base your um extra firm or ultra firm stabilizer your sort of papery your decaville your peltex whatever that is sandwiched in between your nice fabric and your foam whereas on the main panels you go fabric foam then stabilizer okay so i'll double check i'll double check with those uh tomorrow i'll show you once we've sewn them uh once i've sewn them into place fuse them into place just so you can double check that you are all set before we go any further so is everybody happy with what we're doing so far and with cutting out uh oh you got to walk the dog bye liz i suppose you have got to walk the dog sometimes haven't you um okay so we're all good we're all happy with our cutting out and we'll be back tomorrow for strap I think I will double check, but I think we're on straps. So get all your cutting out done if you can, and then we'll be ready to sew tomorrow. And we're back at the same time, three o'clock. Hopefully Lizzie will be feeling a bit better so she can come and do some comments for us. Um, if not, I'll comment, I'll go through and comment afterwards. If anybody's got any questions, I'll reply. And tomorrow will be over there at the sewing machine. And I will not look out the window because I will just concentrate on what we're doing. Great. Okay, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Thank you for keeping me company in my isolation. It's really hard working from home sometimes, isn't it? Um, but it's great to know that we've got our community, we've got our friends, we can all um, chat in the group. So I look forward to seeing your fabric choices. Show them to me in the group. Show me your fabric choices. Show me when you've done your cutting out so that we can um, all celebrate the fact that you are really good at choosing fabric colours. And I'm just really good at choosing fabric colours when I do them in the last 10 minutes before I need to use them. <laughs> okay, um, thank you for tuning in. See you tomorrow.